Welcome to the State of Wild episode 12, a regular podcast, YouTube video, web series thing. As usual, we've got Corbett Games joining us tonight. Corbett, how are you doing, friend? Hey, I'm doing good, Neath. What's up? Uh, I'm enjoying coming back into Wild Hearthstone since the Dark led nerfs, so it's been fun. Um, what about you? Uh, doing pretty well. I've been really enjoying the Hearthstone meta. We'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, it's been a, it's been a long week, and I was I'm super excited to just like chill this weekend and do nothing but like play video mm-hmm. games it's like it's one of those nice. weekends <laughs> just like many yeah. of them um, but yeah for those of you guys that are listening you guys know the drill by now uh we're gonna be doing three things during today's episode first of all we're gonna be talking about the state of the wild metagame so what's dominating how to beat it and decks that might be flying underneath the radar second off we're gonna be talking about any wild news controversial topics or maybe the lack thereof and last but not least we'll be talking about our decks of the week all right, so before we get started, just a reminder to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoy content like this. It's free, and it supports us a lot. All right, let's get started. So, wild metagame, Dark Lord Warlock has been nerfed. Uh, mm-hmm. At the time of this recording, it was five days ago, okay? And I'm not going to lie to you, it feels like a whole new world out there. I can see the sun again. I feel like the nerf to Dark Lair has completely kind of opened up the metagame, at least for the five days that we've experienced so far before the next oppressive thing takes hold. Um, so, I mean, let's just start off with this. Uh, last week, when we were talking about the nerfs, we kind of predicted that Rena Priest was going to be super dominant on the ladder, yet we haven't really seen it at a super high percentage. And so, first of all, it's kind of refreshing, right? It's allowed for some, like, new decks to be played for a little bit, uh, get that get that content in. But uh, why do you think that Rena Priest is not yet dominating the ladder game? Is it literally just, like, human nature of, like, people wanting to play something different? Yeah, I think that's mostly it, right? I think that uh, Dark Lair Warlock... Um... Okay, so like whenever there's like a best deck in the format and a warping deck, uh, sometimes the decks are very limiting what they let you play. Like sometimes there can be a really good deck and it still lets you play a variety of different strategies. The thing with Dark Lair Warlock is that because it could only be answered by very specific things, it kind of pushed out a lot of stuff that people might have wanted to try. Um, There's very few classes in particular that had clean answers. Mostly it was like Warrior or other Dark Lair Warlocks or uh, Arena Priest. And so now with Dark Lair being nerfed, it really is um, kind of like the early days of the expansion, it feels like, where people are kind of yeah. have finally been unchained uh, for the past like three days. I see what you did um, there. I and, see what you did there. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and they've been able to play kind of whatever they really want, like ha- have a crack. And it's been very diverse. Um, it's been very uh, experimental, I think. Um, and so I'm sure that will change uh, quite rapidly because Rena Priest, I'm sure, is still going to be insanely good. But right now, yeah, right now it's a really fun spot. And people seem to be really enjoying being able to try a whole bunch of different stuff. And yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's very reminiscent to like the very first day of the expansion where people are like excitedly trying yeah. things. And then people figured out that Dark Lord Warlock was broken. And I think we're going to have a week or so of trying things and people realize, well, this doesn't be priests, and I'm losing a priest. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to play yeah. priest. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, but what have your like first impressions been? uh i know it's only been five days but like what decks have you seen pop up i know you and i have both been playing some some pretty cool decks that we'll talk about in a little bit but like what are some of the decks that you've seen pop up uh in the metagame with dark Lair being nerfed uh i think there were like two that really stand out to me as having a massive increase the, the first is discard warlock um not really a massive surprise there i think we predicted that last week yeah. Um, the Discard Warlock would probably have a large resurgence as people kind of gravitate towards the next Warlock aggro deck. Discard Warlock was really good last like before the nerfs. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like redundant. So like why play it over Dark Lair? Uh, so yeah, Discard Warlock is one. And the other is Jade Druid. I feel like Jade Druid and this Druid list in general have seen a big uh, increase in play, um, yeah. which has been interesting. Like a lot of people have gone to the Guardian Animals stuff uh and trying that out in jade lists and so yeah those are the two main ones i think uh that i've personally been seeing um on ladder a lot more are we allowed to, to take credit for both of those because we talked about them last week are we allowed to stoke our yeah, ego a little I, bit a little bit i think so i think we can i think we uh can take sole credit for this i i believe so yeah yeah so you guys are welcome um i have i've also been seeing we'll talk a little bit about inner fire priest but i've also seen a ton of inner fire priest not just you on ladder um yeah and i've seen a lot of experimentation with classes like hunter i think i've seen a lot of secret hunter on ladder uh and reno hunter making a comeback i'm not sure how long that'll last but 
it, it's been kind of refreshing seeing like paladin and hunter like more than just three classes on ladder <laughs> right mm-hmm. um but let's talk about discard warlock and, and jay druid since you guys kind of brought this up let's talk about those first yes they're popping up but do you think that their success or popularity is due more to the fact that you know it's the early days like they'll disappear once winter priest becomes that dominant force or do you think that they have like strong staying power in the meta game or like potentially you know being a tier one deck right that the meta has to play around you know alongside Rena priest uh i think discard warlock i feel quite confident that it's gonna be one yeah. of the better decks in the format um i i don't know if it's gonna be like tier one tier two whatever but it'll be very competitive and i think it's gonna be very popular um yeah. and with jay druid uh i don't know not sure <laughs> i mean that's okay right i i don't know uh which way it'll go um it does seem i don't know like the guardian animals build seems very promising i'll say that much um so i think that even if jade druid isn't like the best deck i I think it will maintain a much larger presence than what it had pre uh the pre-bounce patch and stuff um but yeah discard wall i can feel more confident in as being one of the top tier decks uh as the meta moves forward yeah that jade druid list i think i i have been pleasantly surprised with the power level of that given the fact that you have like nine patches and a baku in your deck like you never want to draw the minions in that deck and it still yeah. seems so uber consistent and, and pretty powerful because at least in my experience when i have played against priest with that deck you are able to generate you know a pretty decent amount of pressure while gaining mm. a crap ton of armor that like it feels like it's in a pretty good spot against Rene priest so i feel like both of the, these decks are kind of here to stay, <laughs> at least for the foreseeable future. Um, another deck I wanted to talk about that I've seen a lot on ladder. Uh, I haven't actually seen that much Kingsman. I've seen a ton of Odd Rogue though, um, and I know we talked okay. a little bit about this last uh, last episode as well. But Odd Rogue is pretty freaking good, dude. It is. Yeah. It's always been one of those like really good anti aggressive aggressive decks, just because of the like power of the hero power, right? Mm-hmm. But with the inclusion of Beneath the Grounds and Jandis, like, the deck just, like, holds its own against Jade Druid and Priest. Like, it seems like right now that and Discard Warlock are probably, like, the two go-to aggressive strategies on ladder. Yeah, um, Odd Rogue definitely was, like like we talked about, it was super well-positioned. It was very strong um, prior to the bounce patch. You know, it was, like, on the cusp of, like, Tier 1, Tier 2. It was very, very good. Um, the Priest matchup is actually, I think surprisingly close to even people think that maybe priest might dominate that matchup it really doesn't and i'm not even talking about beneath the grounds as a tech choice i just mean like it's just the standard list um actually can like really pressure and sustain and keep pushing and stuff so yeah uh odd rogue is really well positioned um i don't know if it'll ever become that popular people seem to have a very large disdain towards the baku and gen decks for whatever reason they just don't seem to ever pick up as much popularity as their win rate would you know suggest um and i think it's larger because they don't necessarily feel like they're doing that powerful things but yeah odd rogue um very strong uh definitely a great choice on ladder if anyone takes it um i'm surprised that you've seen that much of it though i that hasn't really been my experience yet mm, but okay. um I'll, I'll take your word for it i guess i mean you you've been like messing around in like top 20 legend i've been messing around like top 100 legend and i've seen a ton of it um mm-hmm. i don't know it's it's that's really interesting though like the drastic difference in metagames just between like 50 ranks that's kind of insane it can also yeah it can also just depend on the time zone right yeah that's fair that's, that's, that's fair. a part of it yeah i mean um, but yeah so yeah. so with the kingsman thing i'd mention is that uh kingsman does look like it's dropped off a fair amount like that secret passage mm-hmm. nerf actually looks like it hurt like the cards obviously i think still good but yeah kingsman doesn't quite look like the monster that um it potentially could have been yeah, I, I feel like this conversation has me really interested in the role of psychology when it comes to, like, presence of decks mm. in the metagame. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but this this week has felt like people playing what they, they feel like they want to play, right? Not what they have to play. Yeah. And which is, like, interesting. You brought this up when it comes to Odd Row, right? People don't feel like they're doing anything powerful because it's just, like, press the button right but it turns out your button's pretty freaking powerful by the way um and i think it's also people i don't know how to, how to say this uh like odd has been a deck for almost three years now i think right we're coming on two and a half three mm-hmm. years of, of that being a deck and people might just be like bored of the deck 
Whereas, like, Aggro Kingsbane hasn't been a deck for that long, right? This new Guardian Animals Jade Druid is, like, brand new this expansion. And I feel like that has a significant, you know, role in, in the metagame. And it's, this is maybe a topic for, like, a whole other episode that we have to dedicate to, right? Because I don't think we can yeah. touch on it super quickly in 10 minutes. But And I want to see how the metagame plays out. You're ultimately going to see Odd Rogue disappear from the metagame, right? And I think it's going to become less popular than Kingsbane Rogue. And people are going to play with Arena Priest because it has a new tool, like Toy and Pole Celt. You're going to see people playing uh, Quest Mage because it has new tools and it's a powerful deck. You're going to see people playing Jade Druid because it has Guardian Animals. And I feel like, which is interesting, right? Because you never hear people say that, like, or you always hear people comment on how, oh, well, Wild stays the same, right? Uh, new expansion doesn't have that big of an effect. It obviously has one, both in card quality mm-hmm. and like psychological impact of what people want to play. Yeah, um, so I always say that people play, it's always a combination of what people like and what mm. people perceive to be strong. Yeah. And sometimes what people perceive to be strong doesn't line up with what is actually strong. And sometimes, you know, what people like doesn't, you know, aren't the best decks. Uh, so it's always a combination. And, you know, sometimes people often pretend that decks exist in a vacuum, like they're all getting a, a test, like a test score, like you scored 99 out of 100, therefore you're the most popular deck. Um, that's not really how it works. Like everything is perform, everything performs kind of relative to what else is being played. Mm-hmm. Like if again, like like if there's lots of Reno Priest, then Quest Mage is good. If there's not much uh, Reno Priest and lots of Aggro, then Quest Mage is bad. It's not really like Reno, it's not like Quest Mage gets a like power level score at a Dragon Ball Z, and then that's how like good it is or whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, the whole psychology of what sees play and what people feel like is powerful and all that kind of stuff. Um, like you said, could definitely go into a much larger topic, a much larger episode. Um, but yeah, it will be interesting to see how things move forward yes. um, as, as things develop. Yeah, if that's something that you guys want to see, let us know in the comments so that we know that, like, hey, we can dedicate an episode to this in the future. Because, I mean, I'm personally interested in it, but if you guys aren't, then we won't do anything about that. Um, but the last little question here in, in the meta section. This is this is the dreaded prediction question, right? Because when you're wrong, mm. you're gonna get yelled at, and this is gonna get clipped and shoved in your face. Oh, well, you thank th- God, I'm never wrong. So, <laughs> <laughs> in the long run, do you think Priest is gonna end up being the best deck in the format? Yes, uh, by your definition. Yes. <laughs> Not even close. Yes, I think. I think <laughs> no. I, I think Reno Priest is. Um, I don't. I don't think the wild player base uh, is gonna be aggressive enough in targeting it. Um, I think that I think wild playbase in general um, is I would say a little less um, aggressive in going after the best decks compared to something like standard, especially at like higher ranks. Um, wild tends to be a little bit more diverse, and people tend to play a little bit more what they kind of want um, and don't hard target things as much. So I think that Reno Priest, while it does have weaknesses, um, it's obviously a very very powerful deck, and I think it will be the best deck moving forward, and it'll be the most warping and the most popular. But you know, that's just my prediction. I'm very happy to be wrong. So we'll, well see. I'm glad you're never wrong because that's exactly how I feel. Reno Priest, I think, has the big target on its back, and uh, I'll be looking to see if that changes. Uh, I, again, I will be very glad if it does. But uh, yep, yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys react to that. But yeah, let's move on to part two. Okay, so here's where we usually talk about wild news. Um, and while we just had nerfs, we don't really have too much to talk about. So we wanted to start a little new section here uh, for when there is no news, uh, where we answer a question from the YouTube comments, related to Hearthstone or not, right? And so if you want to have a question potentially answered in a future episode, make sure that you guys you know, reply to the pinned comment with a question so that we can, it's easy to find and... Uh, you know, maybe maybe we'll answer it, whether we like it or not, right? So this week's question, uh, Corbett, I know you're going to love this one. What would mm-hmm. you guys like to see in a new expansion that could bring something new to the wild meta? For example, a Murloc-heavy expansion, so it's like heavy tribal synergies, more singleton support, I know you love that one, some new keywords yes. or mechanics. <laughs> um, it's a pretty loaded question, and so i kind of just let you... You know, you have the floor. What would you like to see in future Hearthstone expansions? Well, like I said, it's a very hefty question. I'm not a game designer. I'm doing a like a quick bit on whatever. So it takes a lot to actually come up with really clean, good mechanics and keywords, and people get paid uh, to do this for their job. So I, <laughs> I am not a game designer. But that said, um, things I would like to see. Uh, singleton support? Not so much. Let's not do that again. <laughs> let's, let's stay a little bit far away from that one. For a um, while. Any recruits? 
Yeah, any like recruit, don't draw this card. Let's stay away from that. So it's easier for me to identify what I don't want to see. Um, what I want to see, um, things that stand out to me that seems a bit unexplored is positioning. Um, I think the the recent Demon Hunter set with the outcast mechanic did a really good job in kind of outlining positioning in the hand mm -hmm. and kind of that being a little bit of an interesting mechanic. But I still think positioning on the board is a very unexplored um, mechanic in Hearthstone. There really aren't that many cards that uh, take advantage of that. There's some of them that take advantage of it um, in defensive aspects, right? Like Combustion is a recent one. Um, Meteor is a, another one. Rolling Fireball. Those are all like very defensive cards. There isn't really that much in terms of offensive stuff. Like we have Flame Time, we have um, uh, Die Wolf Alpha, um, and I'm sure there's a couple others that are slipping from my mind. But it's an interesting mechanic to me, and I really would like to see that explored a little bit more because positioning and making that stuff matter. I remember I used to love playing Zoo um, when I was kind of yeah. starting out and having the die wolf positioning and how relevant that was in so many situations with the eggs and all that kind of stuff with the haunted creepers, the like just trying to set things up really cleanly and learning about positioning like that. And it's just very like untouched. So that is something that I personally would like to see. I know it's not an exact mechanic, but um, you know, <laughs> it's just a quick YouTube question, right? So yeah, I'd like to see that. What about you? I, I'll, I'll... First of all, has there ever been a card offensively other than Flame Tongue and Dire Wolf? You said there's probably more. I, I can't I said, think of any. I said any. maybe. I can't. Think I, of I know anything. this one in. I know this one in the the new adventure thing that they did, where it go like the cards next to it gang taunts. I think, but that's about it. Nothing in the actual constructed game came to mind. Well, there's like, there might be one. Yeah, there's that one card that. Uh, I mean, you gave it like your adjacent minions like spell power or taunt, right? Like Sun Furies, but nothing like Dire Wolf. Uh, yeah, Tongue, yeah. But... Yeah, I still remember, mm -hmm. like, my very first deck was Zulok, and, like, learning how to order, like, or position for, like, Implosion and Arabian Egg and Haunted Creeper procs properly yeah. was, like, it taught you how to play the game, which was, like, super interesting. Um, but, yeah, for yeah. me, um, I, I honestly am not a big fan of, like, shoving tribal synergies down my throat. Like, I love tribal synergies, but I don't love them being, like, hey, here's 30 dragons. Here, make a dragon deck, you know? Um but I've yeah, also, I've been playing yeah. a ton of Magic recently, and so, like, just to pull a couple of things, you know, from their game, I don't, like, they obviously won't translate, uh, you know, perfectly to Hearthstone, but I would like to see stuff like enchantments, and so what I mean by that is, uh, like, they have stuff, or artifacts, I guess is the better one, where, like, make mm -hmm. a, it's like a minion with a passive ability that boosts your game plan, right? So stuff like Bran, for example, um... But I'd like to see, I don't know, strong cards, because there are some sort of cards out there, but like a, a three mana one four totem, that whenever a totem enters the battlefield, it gets like plus one, plus one, right? Like, that are really hard to interact with or remove, so that you actually, you know, again, this is me just throwing out ideas, because I don't really know how to, how to balance this, but... Right. Just, I guess... It's it's added benefit outside of minions, I guess. Maybe I don't know if that's balanced or not. But like, let's say I cast a six mana spell. Um, all totems have plus two plus two for the rest of the game. I'd like to see more stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know how broken that would be. But yeah, I'm sure you could figure out some way to break it. Break it. But yeah, I don't know. That's a really hard question. And again, we're not game designers. Yeah, of it's course. Just the yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very broad question, but uh, yeah, kind of interesting. <laughs> uh but yeah uh, so again if you guys want to see some of your questions potentially answered in future episodes make sure you guys leave a comment down below uh but yeah let's go ahead and move on to part three all right so part three our decks of the week so here's where we talk about you know a top meta deck and a couple of off meta choices for those of you guys that aren't super try hard into laddering uh but i will say corbett and i have both been i don't want to say try harding but not necessarily memeing um this week and so we have three fairly meta decks for you uh for you this week uh and i think they're all definitely capable of hitting legend and climbing legend i think both of us have been playing these in top 50 legends so uh they're all very very good decks but i'm gonna let corbett take it away with his first deck because it's a pretty freaking sick deck <laughs> um yeah so we're not try harding not maiming we're in betweening uh we're trying off meta stuff that seems competitive so the first one we have here dragon priest uh inner fire priest is probably my most played archetype ever like over the years of hearthstone so i always want to tinker with it 
Um, and I felt very bad because it got nerfed. <laughs> my The package that I wanted with Cabal Acolyte got nerfed like a day after I kind of figured out this list. Um, but still, it seems quite strong. I've been playing it post-nerf and it seems great. Um, so yeah, I, this is an inner five list that uses the Wave of Apathy um, as sort of a, a way to kind of leverage Potion of Madness and Cabal Acolyte. Um, so often... It's the same kind of thing where you're kind of like stacking the board and looking to like buff up Divine Divine, Inify your opponent, OTK. Um, except now we have a bit more counterplay, right? We have the ability to steal their minions with like a five mana mind control, um, which does seem pretty powerful. It uses some of the new stuff like Raise Dead and the Draconic Studies, um, kind of like just boost that little dragon package and recycle some of your powerful minions. Um, but yeah, it seems like a powerful list. It seems like it's very hard for the opponents to often play around. It's awkward because if they stack too much stats on the board, they um, can get the minion stolen and killed <laughs> by just going like wave, potion, divine, inner fire. I experienced um, that firsthand. Yeah. Been... yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think I beat up me after the zone Allura for a 26 26 or something. <laughs> um, but yes, it, it's been a lot of fun uh, trying to test this. I think inner fire priest and this dragon package in general, this, this whole, like a lot of the, like, the tools in here are very, very powerful. So is this the best shell? I don't know, but I'm like 20 and eight with this list at like top 10. So it's been good so far. Yeah, so we have a little bit of extra time in this episode. So let's let's dive into some of these lists a little bit more than we normally do uh, and talk about some of the kind of maybe hidden synergies uh, within mm -hmm. this list, especially for a list like this that has a bunch of synergies that might not be super obvious, right? I think the small sure. one that I was a big fan of when I was playing against you was this Cleric of Scales to draw spells out of your deck and then raise dead to bring it back and you actually draw an insanely surprising amount of cards like it's it's turn yeah. six and you have 15 cards left in your deck i'm just like what's happening so it makes the combo <laughs> feel that more consistent which is scary but yeah uh -huh. yeah um yeah visions and uh cleric both like uh, being able to tutor that much gives you a ton of consistency consistency in finding your pieces um and like i said like raise dead being able to bring it back is really nice uh, Raise Dead on Dustbreaker is absolutely dis disgusting on any aggro deck. Um, there was one day, one game I played against an aggro druid where I played, I think, four Dustbreakers and I could have played a fifth. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of nasty. Um, some of the other little synergies that stand out, maybe um, a very simple one is just like North Tri Cleric on one into Priest of uh, uh, Powered Beast on two. Uh, it's very like simple, but you trade, get the immediate card draw, um, which is kind of juicy. Um, other ones, uh, let's see, Draconic Studies, um, I don't know, Draconic Studies being able to cheat out the Dust Break is kind of cute, like, you get to play it as a, a Dragon Activator, right, for your Dusk or Operative, but you get to cheat out some of these guys really, really early, which is, um, often really important in Wild, right, like, being able to play Dust Breakers on three is a big difference than playing it on four, uh, so yeah, I don't know, there's a bunch of cute little stuff here, and I, I like this list a lot, um, and I'm gonna be, like, I don't know, keep playing it for a bit, I think. Yeah, I I love Inner Fire Priest. I do not love playing against Inner Fire Priest. Priest is very yeah. very good at doing the annoying things very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm honestly like I'm really surprised that Raise Dead is like still a card at zero mana. Like that mm -hmm. card, I feel like in 20 different decks is still probably the best card in those 20 decks. Uh, we're pretty damn close. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to our next deck. Uh, we're gonna hop down here and talk about Q Block. And so you're, you're about to say key block off meta? Like, come on, bro. But just just wait. We're running Arc Witch Willow, all right? And so I initially was running this version of the deck specifically to play with the buffed Arc Witch Willow, but it actually turned out to be pretty damn strong. Um, mm -hmm. And so this version of the list is really, really heavy on demons, kind of what we were talking about last week. Uh, so we're running nine demons, double Void Collar, Doom Guard, uh, Dreadlord, Voidlord, and the Malganis. And essentially, the way that you beat Priest with this deck, because <laughs> uh, that's kind of what I'm always thinking about. How do I beat Priest? Because we're Key Block, we're Warlock, we get to beat Aggro. Instead of just going purely like Key the Doom Guard and Plague of Flames and try to deal like 15, 20 damage burst, you just have literally endless waves of threats. Uh, and I, the reason I really like the Willow is because turn seven is the Psychic Scream turn, right? They'll Psychic Scream two big demons. From your board into your deck and then you really don't want to play the Gul'dan on 10 because you only have like one or two demons but willow pulls them out of your deck it's insane just amounts of tempo 
uh, and it's been really, really good for me. I, I haven't played too much of this deck, but I am 9-3 and three with this deck in Top 100 Legends, so it feels pretty damn good. It beats up on Jade Druids, like 100%. Beats up on Quest Mages. It's been pretty good against Priest. Uh, and for me, those are like the three parameters of being pretty damn good. Um, I will say it's a little bit worse against aggro because it's like the Void mm -hmm. Caller into Void Lord consistency isn't, uh, you know, as consistent. But I mean, you're still Warlock, right? So you're you're fine into aggro, just not as auto win as it used to be. Yeah, I like this build a lot. Um, I don't know. I, the Doom Guards were like the kind of the flex spots, I think, mm -hmm. um, where you're kind of running them, obviously, to make your Willow really consistent and make sure that it's always hitting the two demons and stuff. But um, it is potentially slightly greedy, and I think you could look at running something else. But I kind of like this 30. I'll just say that I like this 30 as it is. Um, but yeah, so Willow, like, I haven't actually had the chance to play Q Block myself. Mm -hmm. But yes, Willow, obviously... Um, like, like you said, as a as a psychic stream sort of response and being able to reflood the board, it's a ton of mana cheat, it's a ton of tempo, uh, very very strong. So yeah, Q block I think is in a pretty happy place right now. It seems like it, um, <laughs> where Q block is kind of giving a little bit more breathing room than what it had previously, um, especially against like Dark Lair Warlock where it didn't really have great answers to multiple eight eights. Um, so yeah, I kind of like this list a lot. I'm sure I'll give it a, a shot soon. But yeah, I'm almost excited to see the return of Q Block. I've kind of missed it while it's gone away whoa, from whoa, Demon whoa, Hunter. Whoa, whoa. Don't say that too loud. I know, I know. I can't believe what I just said. But yeah, with Demon Hunter kind of pushing out for a bit, I, I kind of want to play some Q Block now. Yeah, also shout outs to last week where Corbett said that Willow was probably going to be good. And I doubted it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I need to learn my lesson. Corbett's never wrong. So... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Key block, key block is good again. It's, I mean, it's never stopped being good, but it, I think it's back solidly in the meta game, especially if this holds its own or is slightly favorable into Arena Priest moving forward. I think you're super happy to see that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and last but not least, um, I've never really considered myself a, a paladin aficionado, but uh, this is the deck that I've been jamming a ton of and having a lot of fun on ladder. Um, I'm holding about a 56% win rate, so not, like, super great. But, I mean, for Pure Paladin, or I guess this is not even Pure Paladin anymore. It's just Libra Paladin. Um, doing mid-range decks justice in this format. Uh, it's been it's been a ton of fun to play. It's got a little bit of high roll mana cheat with the Allura. Uh, and I think the big interesting like kind of innovation, I don't even want to call it innovation, but uh, just, like, Pure packages is just not worth it. It's not good. <laughs> I think a lot of the pure Libram lists are really only running the 4-mana 4-2 equip a true silver, which just doesn't feel super impactful, or at least didn't mm -hmm. in the metagame. And so like, I just took them out. I put in Lothab, put in Penflingers. The Penflingers have been really good at helping control the board against rogues and other aggressive decks. And, you know, it actually is kind of a ton of damage. <laughs> against priest if they like aren't killing you on turn eight turn nine and you're able to cycle libra wisdoms it's it actually it adds up really 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 quickly mm -hmm. um yeah so this build is something that like has seen something similar to this the same plan standard yeah. uh where play people abandoned the pure idea and they went for like pyromancer and penflinger and stuff like that mm -hmm. um as far as i'm aware i'm not super clued in to, to that but uh yeah the the idea of penflinger um Penflinger makes this deck, I think, a lot more interesting than where it was. And now, Libram Paladin was a deck that I think was actually very solid and underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the more like underplayed decks and has been for a very long time. Um, the reason was, I don't think it lined up super well at High Legend because its two worst matchups were like Dark Lair Warlock and Reno Priest. So it's like last expe course, like last before the nerf. Yeah. <laughs> before the, so before the, uh, before the nerf, like people at High Legend don't play it. People at High Legend say it's bad, and then it kind of triples out the idea that it's not good. But I think for a lot of people, um, this deck has actually been very solid at uh, like mid to lower ranks. Um, it's very, very good into things like Rogue. Um, it has a ton of like anti-aggro tools where it has like really efficient um, early game and it has a ton of healing and taunts. So Kingsbane Rogue would really, really not like to say this, I think. Yeah. Uh, Spike Red Steed, not their favorite card ever. Um, but yeah, the Penflinger in this list is super cool to me. Um, I, I was talking before the uh, before the podcast started. It reminds me a lot more of like a Rogue card or a Rogue mechanic compared mm -hmm. to something like um, Paladin, where you're constantly like this replaying all these cards over and over. It doesn't feel very Paladin, which is usually very curvy 
and kind of just like <laughs> um, just kind of like curving out and playing your minions out and stuff. Um, nothing so yeah, against that. Okay, cool. for those of you that like it. There's no, no, against like that. yeah, some yeah, exams. So, like uh, different decks and classes exist for different players. I'm just saying it's a different feeling to what Paladin can typically do. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed watching you play this deck actually, in Meowth, and uh, yeah, it seemed to be having a lot of success with it from what I've seen. Yeah, I honestly playing not like Paladin is probably the reason that I like playing like it, this. if that makes sense because yeah, yeah. The, the paladin deck that i have enjoyed the most have been like it was like anything otk paladin back in standard was the paladin deck that i enjoyed playing the most and mm -hmm. it did that did not really play like paladin i felt like it was it was a pure combo deck whereas yeah. this is essentially it doesn't play like paladin <laughs> which is it was just really cool and there's a ton of small things you can do in here um but it's been a lot of fun uh i will say if Q-Block gets super popular, stray away from this list. It's not good. Um, Void, yeah. Void Lords and Malganos are not your not your friend. <laughs> but uh, but other than that, it's been really fun. I We were talking earlier about Odd Rogue being like that premier anti-aggressive aggressive deck. And that's probably true for like meta decks. But like you were talking about with Kingsbane Rogues and like Odd Rogues not being able to deal with your Spike Ridge Seed or Librams of Hope super efficiently. Like... Be once you hit four or five mana and you go Allura into True Seeker into Steed or like a five or six mana Libram of Hope, like the game's over, which is mm -hmm. insane. Uh, one thing I do want to try in this list um, is Lord Keeper Polkelt, actually. Uh, because against because oh. against Priest, you really want your Libram's of Hope and like your seven drops because those are your threats against Priest to keep putting on the pressure. Mm -hmm. Um and against aggressive decks, it puts the healing at the top of your deck. And so I'm not like 100% sold on it, but it's something that I am probably going to try out eventually. Okay. Um, just I, I'm still in the, the innovation stage of this deck, but it's been a ton of fun. And for those of you guys that are looking to play something, I don't know. It's not really new because I feel like Librams have been around for four or five months now, but they really haven't been a thing in wild. So I'm going to call it new. Um, if you guys want to try it. <laughs> Penflinger, what a card, dude. dude <laughs> Holy I, crap, Penflinger eventually I'm, I'm gonna have to go through and like listen to my card reviews and figure out like how wrong i was about so many of these it's cards. like it's like this this and broomstick right these two little yeah. one mana one ones are just absolutely shredding things i love it i underestimated those two cards i like slept on i'm so bad at evaluating cards apparently because i slept on <laughs> uh, i shouldn't say this because now you guys are never going to watch my card review videos moving forward but like <laughs> but yeah uh i don't know man these are these are three pretty cool decks. They're not really memes or top meta decks, but uh, I hope you guys you know enjoy them and take them to ladder and have a little bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it for us today. Just a reminder that we're going to be doing these episodes every Sunday with uh, news and decks and you know, discussions every week. Uh, and just a reminder that we're also on Spotify. So if you guys you know want to listen on the go, all right, uh, it's check it out. It, it's it usually makes its way to Apple Podcasts super late in the week for some reason, which is really annoying, and I yeah. apologize about that. But Spotify and YouTube are generally, you know, they're 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 ready to go immediately. <laughs> but Corbett, thank you again for joining me today. Let the people know where they can find you. Guys, you can find me on uh, Twitch, Twitter, all that stuff at Corbett Games. Um, I will just put out a little shout out that. I've been streaming, um, my schedule's kind of switched a little bit. So if anyone has been missing my streams, it's probably because I'm streaming later. Uh, so I think I stream at about 3 p.m. Eastern time if you're in the States, um, or roughly around that time. So yeah, check it out. Uh, Corbett Games at Twitter and Twitch. Okay, we appreciate you guys watching uh, and we hope you all enjoyed uh, today's episode. Stay safe out there and we'll see you guys next time. Later. Bye guys.